What I have here are two tubers of the Jerusalem artichoke. It's actually more aptly named the sunchoke. It has many different names. It has no relation to Jerusalem or artichokes. It's a member of the sunflower family. It's native to the eastern United States and is grown for its tuber. It's mostly carbohydrates with, uh, I think, 3 grams of protein per serving in there. Um, not so big on the lipids, the fats. So as you can see, this thing resembles uh, ginger rhizomes. And this one is just huge. It's uh, the biggest chunk I could find in my supermarket. I wasn't aware of these things being sold until very recently. A new Vons opened up near where I live. And uh, I think I'll just plant this hole and employ a different strategy like I did with my ginger and cut this into pieces and grow it a little bit differently in a dish with uh, high humidity. All right, so here's my setup. In the cup on my left, I have the smaller tuber buried from here to roughly here with just a very thin layer on top of sphagnum peat moss. So I'm gonna water this with distilled water by a spray bottle. I'm not going to cap it or anything. I'm just gonna keep it damp. And hopefully the microorganisms that are in there and native to the tuber on the dirt itself will uh, prevent you know, household mold from growing and taking over. And this is what a cross section of a freshly chopped tuber looks like. There's no smell to it and nothing really special about it. This is a setup similar to my ginger experiment uh, from 2013, where I have these three uh, protruding sections of a tuber. This is a tuber, not a rhizome, cut off. And I put on a thin layer of sphagnum peat moss because I don't want the bottom to be completely soaking. So uh, this is the very large head, and I'm actually using a dish that's almost twice as large as I did for my ginger series to begin with. So the volume here is nearly, I think, half a liter. And, you know, I'll just spray this with some distilled water and hope that it doesn't grow mold. However, if I do start seeing signs of mold, I might just change to a plan B and start spraying some hydrogen peroxide but I'm gonna keep some plastic wrap over this and not have anything soaking, but just keep it uh, very humid. All right, I have a spray bottle with some distilled water. So I'm just gonna give it a few sprays. And that should suffice. I'll put plastic wrap over that later on. And this might suck because uh, it's all, uh, very dry, so, you know. Actually, that's not too bad. I was kind of afraid all this ultra dry, ultra fine sphagnum peat moss would go flying up in my face. So, um, just kind of keep spraying like this and it'll soak in. And over time, when I see it gets to moisten the bottom sphagnum peat moss, then I'll stop. But you know, I'll just keep this one open. It's just that I don't want any sitting water uh, to touch the bottom of the tuber or where it was cut off in the supermarket. So that thick layer of sphagnum peat moss should do it. So that's enough watering for this cup specimen for now. The head is barely peeking out. As you can see, there are actually places where there are air pockets which is good. I don't want everything to be in contact with something that's sopping wet and the water easily soaked through all the sphagnum peat moss and got to the bottom. And for this second experimental setup, you know, I just have plastic wrap with distilled water sprayed sparingly. So um, the humidity in there should rise to 100%, but nothing will be dripping wet. And you know, that thermometer clock will take some time to equilibrate. But before this, it basically settled around maybe 27 Celsius. And the humidity in California is generally pretty low. But I have these uh, clamp lamps with two bulbs in each. All right, it's day six. And as you can see, it's pretty warm. 29 Celsius would be 
84 Fahrenheit ranges from 27 to 30 most of the time. And if we look at this glass, you can see kind of a, a layer of wet or soil sphagnum peat moss at the bottom. So that's uh, because initially all the distilled water sank to the bottom and soaked that soil. But sphagnum peat moss is very hygroscopic, so this is probably still pretty moist. But I can't tell what's going on in there. At around day three, I started seeing some red in the largest tuber. And by day four, there was uh, a lot more red and some green as well. So it's pretty green now all over for all four of these at day six. Problem is the uh, plastic wrap always obscures everything. So let's see and get this in focus. There's a bit of a mold problem. Um, you know, on the sides, you can hardly see it in the camera. And these bulbs are 830, maybe 850 lumen bulbs. Uh, there's a fluorescent one that gives off 900. So I have this Lux meter. If I position this where most of the tubers were, that's probably 13,500 Lux. 20,000 is considered direct sunlight. If I raise it up though, you know, and move it over here, I can get probably close to uh, the lowest threshold to be considered direct sunlight, 20,000 lux. All right, so I've just did the positioning. I sprayed with 0.5% hydrogen peroxide from the spray bottle. I'm gonna take the plastic wrap off to let this air out since I sprayed a lot. And this is uh, photosynthetically active. It should be growing shoots and roots pretty soon. But, you know, that's getting anywhere from 20 to 25,000 lux, and that should be getting a similar amount, although for that it's not as important. It's been nine hours since my last filming. It's close to 30 Celsius. It gets a little warmer at night with all the electronics. And let's see, if I focus on here, you know, that's pretty promising. It's uh, green, but, um, you know, I'm not sure if you can see it. I guess you can't but there are tiny little silken threads. I hope I don't have spider mites in this cup. And if I do, I'll try to figure out a way to get rid of it without making this thing soaking wet with hydrogen peroxide. But for the time being, it's pretty healthy. I still have higher hopes in this experimental setup. And for this one, looks like the tubers are dried out and peeling. I'm gonna put the plastic wrap back on this because uh. I think the mold problem, it's not bad, but um, yeah, I have no idea how this experiment will go. So um, wish me luck and I'll report back next week.